Howdy Bear, Raymo here, and today I'm going to be discussing baby scorpion care. So this is something I've wanted to discuss for a while now, because when I first got my scorpion, I had never owned scorpions before, and she had a bunch of babies. A bunch being 16. That's a lot of scorpions for someone who has never owned scorpions before. And I was scouring for information, trying to find what to do, because I had no idea what to do with these babies. So this is going to be based completely off of my personal experience over the past couple months owning these guys and what I find to be the most effective, efficient, both cost, health, time consumption wise, and just in general what I think is the best and easiest way to take care of them. So I'm going to start from the very beginning, having a scorpion that has the babies, having the mom scorpion. So if you just bought babies and you don't have the mother, I'll put a timestamp that you can skip to to skip this whole mom, baby, gravid part. For starters, is my scorpion pregnant? Well, that can be hard to tell. First off, do you know if it's a male or a female? That can be the first step. Scorpions are known to be gravid anywhere from seven to 10 months, and in some cases, even up to a year or more. They wait until they feel like the environment is ideal to have babies to have them, so sometimes people bring them home and then several months later they have the babies. Gravid scorpions really don't look much different than normal scorpions except they're a little chubby, but it's hard to tell if they're just chubby or if they're pregnant, so it can be kind of a fine line unless you're an expert and you're very experienced with scorpions. Gravid scorpions will typically stop eating about a week before giving birth, although it can be difficult to tell if the scorpion's gravid or if they're just being picky eaters. Now, this part is slightly debated, I find. I was looking at arachnoboards and a bunch of different other websites where people were sharing their experiences, and some people say, you need to feed them as soon as they have the babies because they'll eat the babies, and some people were saying, no, leave them alone. I personally found the best thing to do was just leave her alone while she had her babies on her back because all I was doing was stressing her out trying to make her eat. My scorpion didn't eat about a week before while she had the babies on her back, and then I think about two or three weeks after the babies were separated from her, she didn't eat. So don't stress it, scorpions can go up to a year without food. That's not necessarily the most healthy thing, although they will be just fine for a couple weeks while they have the babies on their back. By trying to force them to eat, all you're doing is stressing them out, which may cause them to eat the babies. I personally think that a misconception is that they eat the babies because they're hungry. I think what more often happens is that they eat the babies because they get stressed out. So the best thing you can do is keep the temperature and humidity stable and constant, and leave them alone. Some people say that the scorpions will stay on the mom's back for 15 days, some people say theirs stayed on their back for about 40 days. Mine personally stayed on her back for exactly 20 days. So the best thing you can do is just keep peeking in the tank from the side without disturbing them and seeing when you notice that they aren't on her back anymore. When they're first born, they'll be white and squishy and this is why they stay on the mom's back. Until they get a little bit older, they're gonna be very sensitive and this is why you wanna leave them and the mom alone until they're old enough to be separated. Once you notice that they're off the mom's back, it's time to separate them. And now this is when you get to make your first decision as a baby scorpion owner. Do you want to separate all the babies individually or keep them in one tank together? Now this is up to you and what you think is gonna be the best for you and your pets, although I personally prefer that I separate everybody. The reason I prefer to separate them is because it's easy to track who's eating, it's easy to track their health and progress, and also the fact that I know they're safe and they're all getting enough food and they're not going to be harming each other. Technically, you could keep them all together in one tank until they're about a half inch to three fourths an inch long. That's about the age when they'll start hurting each other. Until that age, they would be just fine in a tank together, although like I said, that's just up to you. If you decide to keep them separately, then you're going to need to find something to keep them in. The best thing I would recommend is little Ziploc containers. I got these from the dollar store for under four or five dollars for all 16 of them. I drilled holes on every side to allow cross ventilation, although you could also drill holes in the top, poke holes in the top, or even put mesh if you wanted. I prefer doing the holes across the side because it allows for good humidity but still has cross ventilation. You could also keep them in things like these critter keepers, although what I spent on this is way more than what I spent on getting 16 of the little Ziploc containers. And you don't really need this unless you're planning on keeping all of them because they're going to outgrow something this size anyway, so it'd be a waste of money to get a bunch of these. Once they get a little bigger, you can just slowly upgrade the size of their Ziploc container. This is one I got recently, and this will be for when they get bigger. This is quite large, so I've got a while to go before they need to be put into something this size. You can also keep them in little deli cups like this one, which I have one of the babies in currently which as you can see, still has that cross ventilation going on. 
Now what you put in the enclosure depends on what type of scorpion you have. If you have a desert species, then you may use different substrate than if you have a humid forest species. I personally have Asian forest scorpions, or heterometrous spinifers, so I have coconut fiber in mine. Feeding and watering is once again going to be something that completely depends up to you. So for watering them, you can use many different things. I personally just water the substrate and then they suck it up from there. If you were using sand or substrate for more of a desert species and you're not planning to keep high humidity, you could still wet a corner of the tank and let it soak into the substrate and they could suck it up from there. You can use cotton balls or you can even use things like these little water crystals here, which are commonly used for um, feeder insects. I personally just wet the substrate because I think it's the safest and most effective way to do it. For feeding, there's many different ways you can go about this. You could use pinhead crickets, fruit flies, or even small doobie roaches. It just depends on what you have available to you and what's easiest for you to use. I personally use small doobie roaches because I already had a doobie roach colony, so I have a bunch of the little baby nymphs anyway. I don't have crickets or fruit flies, so this was just the easiest thing for me, personally. The thing about what you feed them and how much just completely depends on what type of insect you're using. With fruit flies and pinhead crickets, you're going to need to feed much more often, and even up to two or three times a week. With the small dubia nymphs, you can feed them once a week and that will sustain them for a long time. I personally only give them each a small dubia nymph once a week, and then sometimes they won't even eat for two weeks because that's a lot of food for them, because it's about the size of them. Now when feeding something like a small dubia, what I do is I crush the head, as morbid as it is, and I stick it in their belly up. The next day I come back and clean out anything left over, and oftentimes they just demolish them. So I personally suggest to feed small doobie roaches because doing it once a week is a lot easier than having to feed them several times a week. But if you'd prefer to do pinhead crickets or fruit flies and that's easier for you, there's no reason why you shouldn't do that. As you can see, my little scorpling is fat and healthy. He's a happy little guy. They're asleep right now because they don't like to be bothered during the day typically. At night these guys do get very active though. I see them climbing around and exploring and trying to escape a lot. You'll notice as they get older that their colors will change. They'll start off white, they'll get a light brown or beige kind of color, and then they'll slowly turn into their black form, depending on what kind of scorpion you have. That's partially for my heterometrous species. But if you have something like a desert hairy, it's going to turn into the light brown color that it'll eventually turn into. Last thing I'll suggest is keep a notebook with dates that they were fed, watered, if anything happens, write it down, because it's really easy to do, and then at the end of the day, if something happens or goes wrong, you can always look back and see the last time one of them ate, and things like that, so it's really handy, and I would suggest it. I hope this video was helpful to a couple people, and I hope it was somewhat interesting for those of you who don't have baby scorpions and don't plan to. <laughs> I plan to make more videos again because I just didn't for a while. I made a video last year in December, and then haven't really made any since then, so I plan to upload again, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next video.